Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and in this tutorial I wanted to show you how to solve a problem to overcome Lightroom's dirty little secret. If you've ever used Lightroom, sometimes uh, for processing your pictures, you might have noticed that sometimes you'll be loading a picture and boom, it changes somehow. If you're shooting in RAW, you'll see this problem a lot. And not, you won't see it at all in JPEG, but the problem is you load this RAW file into Lightroom, you might be using Nikon, might be using Canon, Sony, whatever, and uh, you notice there's not, it's just not quite right. The colors are off, the brightness is off, something didn't go quite right. The problem is, and the dirty little secret that Adobe doesn't really like to share, is that they don't really know exactly what's in that RAW file. Those RAW files are proprietary information that's designed by each camera manufacturer, every OEM, the original equipment manufacturer. So Nikon has their own format, NEF, Canon has their own format too. You'll see it's CR2 and others for, that are older. So you'll see a, a lot of different formats. Those are their proprietary information. So Adobe tries to take the best guess at what's actually in there. And of course, a small embedded JPEG allows it to be seen in a preview, but once it's loaded up, then all bets are off. Now, it's very close enough. Now, if you're doing real estate photography, if, especially for MLS type stuff, there's not enough time to really mess around with doing other OEM software fixes for this. But if you're really concerned about this, and I do this for portrait work, I do this a lot of times for the commercial advertisement work that I do, um, it's to really get good color. So today I'm going to show you an example where this really came up on a recently on doing a landscape photo. It took a nice hike up to the top of one of our ridges here over in Thousand Oaks, California, and boy, did this get it completely wrong in Lightroom. But I was able to fix it, and I'm going to show you from start to finish how you would do this, and what we're going to do is we're going to use some OEM software to fix the problem. You ready? Let's take a look. This is how it's done. So here's the picture, and what we're doing right now is we're looking at this with a piece of proprietary software from Nikon. It's an OEM software called ViewNXi. There's different versions of it. The one that I have is ViewNXi. This is free. If you've ever bought an Nikon camera, it comes on a, uh, a CD that you can uh, download, put on your computer. You can also obviously download this from the web as well. But it's a great resource for managing your files. You can see it's got a directory structure over here. I can see some previews. I can also just look at just the icon view of it, but this is interpreting that raw file that I shot of this um, to its T. It knows exactly how to interpret everything about this. I can go ahead and zoom in 100% on this. It's just still redrawing it. And I can move around. I can see exactly what's happening. I can see every detail that would be in the raw file. Now, it's a little soft looking, especially probably on the YouTube video, but that's because it hasn't been sharpened or anything else has been taken care of yet that normally would be done in Lightroom. But we don't have to use Lightroom to do this. In fact, if you don't have Lightroom, you don't want to spend the money on it. All this software is free. But let's first take a look at what Lightroom would do. So if I went over to Lightroom, and I was going to go ahead and import this photo, and I can see my nice little icon there. It looks about right. I'm going to go ahead and import that in. It's importing that file. That's great. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to develop it. Ah, look what happened. It changed it already. If I go to the Develop Settings and take a look at it, we can see that's way off. That's completely way off. The sky got way too blown out, and now my preview has even changed. Everything is kind of screwed up. Let's compare. View NX, beautiful looking blue sky. Even though it's still soft, hasn't been sharpened or anything, let's go back to Lightroom. It just looks awful. Just something didn't go quite right. So it, sometimes this happens. It doesn't happen all the time. It depends on how close your colors were, your contrast, everything else that Adobe was trying to interpret. So if I were to go ahead and export this out, probably wouldn't look the best. I'm just going to go ahead and just for to show you for the sake of how different this would be, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just show you instead what I would do to solve the problem. So the first thing I would do here is I'm looking at this. I can open this up with another program called Capture NXD. Now if you notice, this program may look a lot like Lightroom because it imitates a lot of the same things. So I've got a preview, I've got my uh, navigation over here which is similar to View NXI, but the colors here are exactly as they would be if I had brought them up in View NXI. Now there's obviously different views here too. I could go to take a look at this. This whole thing is just a, a preview just like I did in View NXI. I can look at uh, just the thumbnails like if I were to be in the library mode of, uh, of Lightroom. But I like this, the, uh, the image viewer mode. It allows me to see the, the images down here. 
Now what I can do with this software, a lot of things, you see I've got brightness, I've got contrast, I want to, you know, up it a little bit. Eh, we might up the contrast, maybe just a, a little bit there. Saturation too, we'll just add just a, a tad in there. You can see we're already not too bad looking. We can then go down and let's get some of that lens correction going on. So we've got this auto distortion control. I have it on by default in here. If I were to turn that off, you can see, yeah, this 20 millimeter lens had a little bit of distortion on it. So I can go back and forth just like I would on doing lens correction in Lightroom. The advantage of doing it here in Capture NXD is, once again, it's OEM software. It knows exactly what needs to be done. Now I can also mess around with some of the gamma, some of the, uh, the curves, as it were. So I can kind of see, yeah, I don't want to darken it up, maybe lighten it up. I've got a lot of control here on maybe upping the whites a little bit, but I'm not going to really mess around with that too much. So it just as, and I also see there's too much contrast in here for what I'm doing, a little bit too much saturation. So I'm going to just take that contrast down. And so we're not looking too bad right there. There's also sharpening in here, but I'm not going to really do that here. I don't like to sharpen it too much here. I'd rather do that as I work with it in Photoshop. So not too bad of an exposure here. It's looking way better so far than what we had in Lightroom, which basically completely washed it out. Now I could make a preset in Lightroom to try to imitate this, but why? It's, you know, it's, it's all right here for me. So now all that I have to do is go file and then convert files. And then I just have to pick the directory. Now, this is one of the things that Nikon doesn't have this nailed down like Adobe does as far as what we're going to do. I have to actually find where my directory is. It doesn't, it remembers where I last was, but not something relative to where I am. So in this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and save it as this TIFF. We're going to use it as 16 bits, 300 DPI, and I'm going to go ahead and embed the ICC profile that came with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to save that out. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, now I've got a big TIFF file. Now, I could take that TIFF file, and this is the TIFF file here, so we could take a look at the raw before, and then some small adjustments that we did there. I could take that TIFF file and uh, load it back into Lightroom if I wanted to, but at this point, I'm actually just gonna use Photoshop. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up Photoshop, and I'm just gonna drag that guy over in there. And then I've got a lot more control of it. Once again, if I was doing real estate, I probably wouldn't worry about this so much. But since I'm doing this for a landscape piece, and also if this was for a builder or some commercial work, I wouldn't mind doing this and converting them all to TIFFs first. So now we've got this in uh, Photoshop. You can see just the same as if I were to load it in Lightroom. Now that it's TIFF, nothing's going to change. So a couple things I would do here, I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate that layer. And I'm going to do my sharpening in here. Let me go and view in a 100%. And that's not too bad. That's not too bad as far as the sharpening. But we can actually get that sharper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, say, uh, Filter. I'm going to go Sharpen. And I'm going to go Smart Sharpen. Now, this is a really great algorithm that Adobe has that's able to figure out what it needs to sharpen and what not. And I'm going to boost this up to really show you the difference. So if we take a look, once this actually redraws, because it's still sharpening, we take a look at how sharp a lot of this stuff got. Definitely got sharp. These, these telephone wires, or excuse me, the, whatever these are, the poles are really sharp. We can see the houses down here are sharp. And then if we look around, the sky doesn't have any grain in it. It knew also the lines of the mountains not to do that. So anyways, I love to do the sharpening in uh, Photoshop if I can using Smart Sharp. Now, that's going to take just a few seconds. You can see my wheel spinning around doing the progress. And if it's too sharp, I can back that off. And how? It's real simple. The reason I made a duplicate layer here is because I can then change the opacity. How much of that layer do I want in there? I can also add a layer mask if I wanted to. And I could say, okay, you know, layer mask reveal all. But if I really didn't want the sky to be so sharp, which it probably isn't at all, I could go ahead and take an eraser here. And that's what I've got here on this mask. And I could erase that off. So no problem. You can see here, I was erasing off that mask. I could go in here too and say, oh, you know what, some of this is a little too sharp on these buildings. So I'm going to go down here, I'm going to erase that sharpening off of those buildings, tone them down just a little bit. Following that same thing, I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to bring in some more color. I like the green, so here's one of my tricks I do. I'm going to go ahead and put layer, adjustment layer, photo filter, and I'm going to call this one green, okay, and I'm going to select a color green. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and invert that mask by going Control-I. I'm going to select my brush tool. 
I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see what I'm doing, and then I'm going to paint on green where I think we should be seeing more green. Boom, some more green starts coming through. Fill that in a little bit. You know what? These are sagebrush over here. They turned out kind of on the, the brownish side, which is fine, but I want to give them a green tint, so we're going to just green them up a little bit. Same way, layer adjustment. Let's get another one in here, another photo filter for red, because we've got some red that are actually in our hillsides over here, climbing up to the top of Montclef Ridge where this was in Wildwood Park in Thousand Oaks. I inverted that layer mask so I can go ahead and paint on it. I select my brush and I'm going to paint on some red on these hills right here. Really add some nice pop there. Doesn't that look like a Sedona, kind of a Grand Canyon-esque type of look? And it really is that way. Remember, we were working with a raw file that got converted to TIFF. We did, I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit so it gets more natural. So we don't see the exact. Remember what a raw file is, it's an interpretation of the light that's hitting a sensor. So it's not exactly what you might see with the naked eye. Now the horizon's off probably on this just a little bit, and I could straighten that all up, you know, if I wanted to. But one more last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and do the sky. Just add a little bit more blue to it. Layer, adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and put in a photo filter. I'm going to call this one blue. Now this is a neat trick here. I'm not going to just paint in the sky. I'm going to actually, let me go and do a cooling filter. I like that one there. So instead of painting in the sky, I'm going to select my layer down here. I'm going to go ahead and select my quick adjustment tool, the quick selection tool, I should say. And I'm going to select the sky. Now, I got pretty close to the sky by just dragging it across there. I'm going to use Alt and drag it across the ground. And that way I'm just selecting just the sky. Now I could get a little bit closer here, but I'm going to leave some of this in here. I'm going to paint some of that later so we can get that. That's, that's pretty close. Now, go back here to this layer mask, and I'm going to go select feather. Excuse me, didn't mean to do that. Select, modify, feather. I'm going to just feather it by one pixel. And then I'm going to go ahead and invert that selection by going Control, Shift, I, and delete. And it deleted the ground. Now what I've got, if I turn that layer on and off, I've got a pumped up blue sky. Not much, just a little bit. I can change the intensity of that with this layer. And that's something I can't really do in Lightroom. So I've got a lot more control. A couple more things just real quick. I like the saturation adjustment that we did in Capture NXD, but let's add a little bit more. Let's add a saturation layer. So we'll just call it Hue Saturation 1. And let's just bump that up to, let's say, just to, for reason's sake, of, we'll do 12. Boom. Nice, nice, nice. Before, after, you can see especially these greens start popping with that in there. Uh, one more thing I might do, I didn't really adjust the levels uh, that we did. I did some contrast. So I'm going to do a couple things here. First, layer, adjustment, and I'm going to do levels. And this is going to be some levels that I'm just going to up a little bit of brightness in. Okay, and I want that because I want that mostly on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and just select it like that. Control I to invert that layer, select my brush to paint it on, and I'm going to paint in the Santa Rosa Valley. That's what we're looking at right here. This is the Santa Rosa Valley overlooking from Wildwood off Thousand Oaks, California. Look at all these shadows in here. Now there's something else I can still do here. Remember our sharpening layer down here? I'm going to go ahead and take and duplicate that. I'm going to get rid of that layer mask by saying delete layer mask. And now I am going to use Adobe Camera Raw Filter. This is what was used in Lightroom. If we go to Camera Raw Filter, this is the exact same engine using the exact same algorithms that Lightroom uses that blew everything away when it was raw. But now that it's TIFF, it's a lossless compression. There's a lot that I can do with it. So once again, just like we would in Lightroom, I'm going to take those shadows and get rid of some of them. I'm looking down here. Those are the shadows I want to get rid of. So I can do that. Boom. Let's get rid of more shadows and say, OK. That's going to process that. Now what I can do is I can take those shadows. I'm going to that's going to, let's just call that shadow so we know which one it is. And I'm going to go ahead and layer, mask, hide. And now what I'm going to do is select my brush tool and I'm going to paint in where I want to reduce some of those shadows. Look at that, real nice. That's what we have. Okay, now this took a while, especially with me talking about it. Um, and I could take this and sharpen it. I should have done it probably before the sharpening layer. But what I can do now, I can go ahead and save this as a Photoshop file. We'll just do that real quick so I can come back to it another time. 
So I just do save as Photoshop and boom, there it is. That's all fine. Now, if I'm gonna save this as a JPEG, I do want it as a JPEG, but there's a couple ways I could do this. I could do save as JPEG, but I definitely want this as sRGB. I'm gonna send this to, if I wanted to get this printed, one of the labs that I use that definitely is looking for a, uh, an sRGB format. So right now, as we imported it in, it used one of Nikon's ICC uh, formats. It wasn't necessarily sRGB, could have been, but let's go ahead and check that out. What I can do is I can now go File, Export, Export As. Now as I export this, I can select JPEG or PNG, but I can also down here convert to sRGB. It always ensures that it is. So I'm just going to say Export All. And this is also an Adobe product. It knows what directory I want to go into. So I'm just going to call it the same, just JPEG, and I'm going to go ahead and save that out. Once it does, it brings up the file browser. I don't need to see that. Let's go back over here to ViewNX. So we've got over here then our output. Our final product was this. Now, let's go back here to Lightroom. Remember how this looked? Let's go ahead and just export that and see what happened. Let's go File, Export. We'll export it as a, a JPEG. And we'll um, go over here. I'll put it in this. Uh, let's see, where are we? We are in to do, to do, to do tutorial. We'll just go in the, uh, we won't put it in a different one. And we'll say uh, export. And now let's take a look at what we have. So if we were to use Lightroom, that's what we would have had. I would have had to make a lot of adjustments. Instead, by using the OEM software for Nikon and then using Photoshop, still able to use Adobe products, that's what we came up with. So Lightroom and OEM products with Photoshop at the end. So once again, I wouldn't really recommend this for real estate for doing MLS photos. There's just really not enough batch processing that you can get out of some of the OEM products. Although Capture NXT does have some, it's a clunky piece of software, but its algorithms and its knowledge of the raw format and the data that's inside of those files is pristine. It knows exactly what's in there. Adobe makes a lot of assumptions. So when quality counts, when you got to get the color right, and especially if you're charging many hundreds of dollars for a personal portrait of somebody, a family portrait, I wouldn't trust it at all to Lightroom. I would first use the OEM software, get it right, and then once you have it in a TIFF format, which it's huge for a reason. That TIFF, probably 130 megabytes that we made. Why? Because it's lossless compression. A JPEG is lossy compression. You're actually losing some of the detail out of it. That's why everybody says, shoot raw, shoot raw, shoot raw. You won't lose anything. You've got a lot of flexibility later then to decide what you need to do. Well, I hope this tutorial was very helpful. And if you'd like to, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. And as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks for watching. And until next time, take care. And get out there and shoot something.